Um, so I'm, I want to keep this pretty informal. I didn't really have anything I specifically planned to talk about. Um, but I wanted to drill in the fact of young entrepreneurship, right? So I'm assuming that the average age here, say around 20 years old, right? Something like that, unless you guys are undergraduates. Um, I don't know, if, so Kieran mentioned that we, I found him when he was in high school. So Kieran is actually 20 years old. He, uh, he's actually legally not allowed to go into bars here. He's from the UK, as you can tell from his accent, which is actually a massive pain in the ass for all of our company happy hours and all that stuff, you know? And we have a very interesting story of what happened to Kieran when we tried to uh, not follow the 21-year-old boys here in Chicago. Um, so in any case, uh, so a little bit about my story and, and why I'm passionate about young entrepreneurship. Um, so I started my first company when I was 15 years old, right? I roughly started with a thousand bucks. Um, start out very basic. I, I used to work at Polo Ralph Lauren. Uh, we had an outlet mall by my house. And I was like, yeah, I, I, Dad, I want some speakers for my car, I want some rims, you know, I want all this stuff. My dad's like, go fuck yourself. I was like, okay, uh, I'm gonna get a job, right? So I go get a job, I work at Polo. I was like, you know, this, uh, this job is actually terrible. Uh, I get paid seven dollars and cents an hour to wait on the worst people in history, uh, or in the world, right? Um, but what I did like about the job is that I got Polo clothes for a discount. Um, so it might be against their terms of service. I was like, you know, well, how can I take this for my benefit, right? So I looked on eBay and saw what this clothes was going for. And I was like, hey, I can buy these jackets and I can sell them here and I did a test, right? And this is like after like two weeks of me working there. So I uh, started very bootleg, right? Uh, in any case, I buy these three leather jackets. Um, they were roughly, I don't know, $300 uh, a jacket, right? Um, after my employee discount was roughly 40%, and these jackets roughly cost me $130. I then sold them on eBay for $360. After fees, shipping, whatever, three thirds. So that's $200 jacket. I sold three in one day. I made 600 bucks. So I was like, wow, this is pretty good, right? So went back, bought some more jackets. My manager <laughs> thought I was like, I was like, I'm actually taking this. I'm from Brazil originally, so I was like, I'm gonna take this to my family in Brazil. <laughs> you didn't really put two and two together, like it's fucking hot in Brazil. You know? <laughs> so in any case, he was actually pretty cool. Uh, so anyways, he eventually got fired. I don't know what was going on, but uh, I, so I eventually had to, I did basically like 12 jackets or something. I uh, had made a couple grand, but then I had this whole system going on, right? Like where every employee, I just pay them off. So like long story short, I eventually heard I was gonna get canned, I left, but I had made about $18,000 off of these jackets in a period of like two months and I'm 15, right? So that's how I got my first startup habit. Sorry, I can say it now because that's 10 years ago. And I mean, if Polo wants to come after me for that, then so be it. After I had some startup capital, uh, you know, I didn't go to my parents. My parents didn't really have the ability just to give me, you know, 20, 30 grand, whatever. And I didn't even know what I wanted to do. Um, but I learned about this stuff about e-commerce, right? So eventually, I got into the uh, consumer electronics space. Um, what ended up happening there is I uh, reached out to uh, a supplier of uh, consumer goods who basically sold iPods, laptops, and all this stuff. I was a 15-year-old kid, kind of had an online business of some sort, um, and just kind of told them my story. Um, he ended up, uh, you know, taking a liking to me. This guy's like already, mind you, he's like rich, right? And this goes into the point of one of the points I'm going to make. But he's a, a rich guy, has been successful, and he basically eventually told me like, hey, uh, you know, he gave me really good pricing. So basically people that were buying like a million dollars worth of goods from him, he was giving me the same price, and I was buying like 5,000 bucks, you know, if, if that, right? Eventually, after like working with him for like two or three months, he gave me a credit line of $50,000 every week to sell this merchandise and he would drop ship it. So drop shipping means essentially I would sell the items and then he would send them directly to my customers without me ever seeing it, right? It was actually the best thing ever, right? And I didn't have to give him the money, right? Until I sold the item. Um, and I didn't have a social security. Oh, well, I mean, I had a social security, but I wasn't 18, right? So I couldn't get a credit line. You know, he knew I was 16. But in any case, um, what that allowed me to do though is basically expand my business and suddenly my revenues, like, so when I became, when I was 16, my business that suddenly, you know, was like this random bootleg business of me selling random polo clothes, suddenly started to be in business that was suddenly doing, you know, you know, 50, 50,000, $100,000 a month, you know, depending on the month of sales, right? That's pretty good for a business that, you know, I started with a thousand bucks a few months prior. Um, so in any case, uh, so this business, I ended up scaling that, and I used it for all my benefit, right? 
Uh, I thought about it and I was like, hey, I run this company. Most kids aren't doing this. So then I started hitting up random scholarship programs. I started hitting up like, I would literally hit up CEOs of multi-billion dollar companies and be like, hey, I'm a 17 year old kid. I run a company that last year did $800,000 in revenue. I'm trying to get an account at your company. No one pays attention to me. Send that to the CEO and see what happens, right? Because you're literally like, wow, this is, these guys are entrepreneurs. They, you remind them of the younger them, right? But and when you're young, you have that advantage to yourself that basically it's like, I'm a young kid and I'm a hustler, right? And I'm just trying to make it here, so will you help me, right? So then I literally had 100% hit rate pretty, pretty much. And basically then they would set me up with like their VP or whatever, and like, yo, deal with this kid and, and just give whatever this kid wants, right? In any case, um, so this business, by the time I was 20, was doing a couple million dollars in revenue. Um, I was in college, I went to Indiana University, uh, business school there, and uh, more for parties, didn't really want to go to college, to be 100% honest, um, but I'm glad I did. Uh, more for the social side, but I did learn some things along the way. Um, and uh, in college, I had uh, this, this business was basically a big catalyst of mine, right? Eventually it turned into, from this online business, uh, actually, I forgot I skipped that part. So eventually what this online business turned into is I got, um, I started selling goods to people. And these people then, uh, a couple of these guys were taking the things I was selling them and exporting them. But I was, I was charging a markup. So eventually I struck a deal uh, with these guys and uh, essentially we started exporting together um, these items. So if you don't know, like so I see some of you guys are probably international students. Um, an iPod here might cost $200. The exact same iPod in, uh, Brazil will cost $600, but if you ship the item there, pay the duties, and sell it wholesale, it should only be $450. And there's there's a like $150 margin. I never understood why there's a $150 margin, and it's just because a lot of these companies just sell at different price to different economies, right? Um, so I was typically the first person to sell items that like six months from now would come out in the UK or six months would come out in Brazil or whatnot. So um, I was selling PS3s when the PS3s came out. I don't know, you guys were probably all like little kids when that was happening. Um, I was a teenager and I was selling for $4,000 pop in Brazil and they were selling very well. I remember I had this one month, I made $30,000 and I was 18, right, um, in one month. So uh, in any case, it, I just basically would find opportunities and make money at whatever I could at, to make that money, right? Um, in any case, if you fast forward during college, it was a big catalyst for a lot of the businesses I started. I started a music website. Um, we're out of school, we're getting a million hits a month. But basically, I just would take 20, like take college kids and just put them as writers on my site. <clears throat> so you could basically, and, and I had like an incentive structure program. I started a screen printing business. But I was able to do all this stuff because I was good, able to delegate someone that I was like, okay, this is clearly a smart person. I'm gonna pay them some money, and then they're gonna figure out this bit, like, you know, this business for me. And it wasn't that hard, it wasn't like reinventing rocket science. But it was not something that I knew would ever scale to a billion dollars. And that brings me to my next point. So you all here have ambitions to create a great company, right? We all do. I, I would like to, I wanna create a billion dollar company and it's not really about the money essentially, I just wanna affect as many people as I can with the product that I created, right? Make it so, right now it's, it's in the mobile space for us. Um, when I left college, I was doing fine financially, right? I still own that company that does $2 million a year and it's on track to do $3 million a year as like one of my side companies, right? But it wasn't about the money. It was about something that I wanted to create that was bigger. But life is like a series, is like a video game, right? So think about it, right? When you're like level one, you're just trying to level up to the next level, right? And you have certain tools and you're trying, like if you suddenly jump to level eight and you're trying to like go for that home run billion dollar business, I mean, it could work out. You know, you could make it through the level, I don't know, you know? And some people can raise money if you're in, so you have like connections and family connections, but it's sometimes very hard. So my advice to a lot of you guys is Forget how old you are, right? Don't think about, oh, I'm 20 years old, I can't do shit, you know, whatever. Don't don't think that, like, I literally, there's like 15 year old kids making thousands of dollars in the app store that I personally know, right? Um, that, and they, and they, if, they if, you, if money isn't the big motivation or you wanna do something big with your life, you have to get that experience first. It's like what Karen was talking about. Be an entrepreneur, learn, like, all the bullshit that you have to deal with to be an entrepreneur, because there's a lot of bullshit, but there's a lot of great things that happen too. Like, I love what I do every day. I can go and I can work seven days a week and be 100% happy with it, right? Doesn't mean I don't get pissed off. You can ask Kevin Zenn, actually he was one of our interns uh, this summer. Uh, you know, you're literally like, what the fuck's going on? You know, always, all the time. Um, but in any case, you, as an entrepreneur, you, I would advise all of you college students 
to look at some idea where you're like, this is a good, a good first stepping stone to starting a business, whether it be a screen printing for all your fraternities or college organizations or whatever it is here, it'll at least give you a base of what you're learning, right? Eventually, I got out of college. Uh, I decided to start Mobile X Labs um, kind of randomly, you know? Uh, it's like when Kieran was talking about embrace failure. Um, I don't know how many of you are familiar here with Techstar, right? I was actually a finalist for Techstars New York. Um, it was right after they had this TV show on Bloomberg. I was pretty pumped. I went in there, had a meeting with David Tish, who was the managing director at the time, pretty well-known guy. He ripped my ass apart. I have never gotten ripped that hard in my entire life, right? Uh, I was like, fuck, I'm ruined. You know, I was like, what am I doing? I just graduated, like, you know, like, it, it was like very, like, it was a shattering blow for me. I was actually always pretty successful. Everything I've always applied for, it always worked out. Um, in any case, uh, I was feeling very down, but at the time I had just, I had recently started working with Karen and we started this whole app concept, right? Um, it started out very random. I just wanted to make an app for my blog, the blog, the music blog that I started when I was in college. Um, eventually we did that. Karen made that for $85, you have no idea. Um, <laughs> in any case, I, when I met him, I literally, like, I wasn't sure. I was like, you know, I, I do a lot of stuff with uh, outsourcers and whatnot, so I was like, Okay, maybe he's from like Bangladesh, and then like eighty-five dollars. Maybe that's not bad, you know. <laughs> so, and, and it's totally true. I totally recommend you guys checking out sites like Odesk and freelancers because look, even if it's like homework things, like you all are very intelligent people, right? Everyone that is in this room went to, got into University of Chicago. Not very fucking easy to get here, right? You got here. Why are you going to waste your time doing something? that would, would easily, you can just pay someone $2 an hour or a dollar an hour to just do it for you. And I'm being 100% honest about that, right? That's like, when people ask me, how do you run five companies at the same time? How have you started four companies that all have done all these things and, and still maintain a, a regular life, right? It's because I am a master of delegation and I can basically be like, okay, I'm not gonna waste my time doing that. That's someone else, that's someone else, you know? And once you learn that, you know, you, you basically change the way that you live your life. You know, um, but in any case, so we started this company, uh, went through, uh, started out kind of random. After we made this app, the app actually did pretty well. The app made like eight thousand dollars. Here didn't know that, but I knew that. It's so made eight thousand bucks. Uh, so I was like, okay, let's do a couple more apps. And so then I threw, I hit up some of my friends that are DJs. Um, I don't know if you guys Coella and some of these like Blau, some of these EDM guys. These are, I all knew them when they were like nothing, right? And they, and I met them through like. But this is like how it all converges at the end, right? So in any case, I met all these people from this random blog I started, uh, made some of their apps, apps did pretty well, and I was like, okay, well I should create an app builder um, to do that. And naively thinking it was gonna be super easy, we built this product after six months. Literally make like 200 bucks a month, right, off this thing, because it's not good enough for us to actually have people pay for, but it's good enough that people will try and use it. And we had a bunch of people bitching all the time about how bad it was. And we were like, okay, well that's great. Um, sweet, and at this time I'm self-funding this, right? So I'm literally spending like $25,000, $20,000 a month of my own money from the previous businesses I started. And I'm like, okay, after like eight months, we're like, hmm, need to figure something out, you know, don't really know what's going on. Uh, six more months, I'm gonna go bankrupt. Okay, uh, so in that situation, came up with the idea of this, okay? Uh, the reason that we couldn't sell, uh, like give our product out and have people pay for it is because the front end of it so basically the end that you guys all interact with wasn't that good. The back end still had a lot of the capability that people wanted, but the front end we didn't have built because we didn't have a front end developer that was that good, right? And I was like, you know, let's try and find someone, but that was gonna take time. But what we decided to do was, let's make some apps, because we have an app builder, right? We have an app builder. Let's uh, make some apps with our own app builder and launch them into the store to our cons consumers. Right? So it's like not really, like I'm trying to start this business here where you guys are using my app builder to create a service um, for other people, right? Instead, I am now using my own app builder to create apps with my own builder to now sell to all, like other people. So we started creating like <clears throat> music playlist apps, Candy Crush cheat apps, random apps. I created like 90 apps. Like we started a little app factory. Like it was like 80% <laughs> of the time, work on a corporate app, 20% of the time, we're gonna bullshit around and make random apps. One of my apps, uh, I decided to market in very interestingly in international markets is this music playlist app. I marketed it very hard in Brazil. So like I, I speak Portuguese, I speak Spanish. So I was like, okay, I know these markets, I'm gonna do that. This app went number one in 20 countries. We spent about four hours on it, right? Suddenly, 
this app was making a thousand bucks a day. I was like, oh wow, this is pretty interesting. Okay, not our core business, but suddenly this month we made 30,000 bucks. So uh, then we started doing that a little bit more and eventually this one app, like literally that we spent four hours on, made about $85,000 for us, right? Four hours, 85,000, pretty good return on investment. Um, so at that point, we decided to take a new approach to our company. 80% of the time we were gonna continue working on our core product. Now the other 20%, we weren't gonna focus on these random apps. Um, we were gonna just make apps that we know that we can ship out quickly um, that we think the market would like. And this is where uh, you know things kind of change. So in September of last year, we decided to make this Instagram client app, right? Kieran made it in about a week along with one of our other developers. We made it for iOS and Android. He literally built it from scratch, from zero to, to like, we literally built it in seven entire days and no one slept. It was fucking awesome. And we got it out and literally overnight, uh, this app went to the 10th of the app store. I remember it, it was, I was in New York City. It got approved at 8.30 p.m. on New York City. I was out with my friends, it was great. I was like, oh, this is great, interesting. Open the app, bugs. I like does not open. I'm like, are you fucking kidding me, right? Uh, in any case, I wake up the next morning. You typically find out how much you made the previous day with Apple the next morning. I open up and it says 532 bucks. I was like, that was pretty fucking high. That was like literally in three and a half hours. I thought it was an error. I didn't really understand. Maybe some lunatic went in there and spent a thousand dollars or something. Um, okay, I see it like kind of climbing the charts throughout that day in New York. I'm really excited to see what the next morning is going to hold, right? So I go out. I was up till like five in the morning. I remember like waking up extremely hangover at 8 30 in the morning it was my friend's like birthday in new york so it was like very intense weekend um, i wake up and i literally see it and the sat made sixteen thousand nine hundred dollars one day i was like holy shit you know and suddenly uh this this day or this app this random app that we made uh for the next two weeks literally just every day sixteen thousand twenty thousand fourteen thousand whatever in, in a period of 10 days we made two hundred thousand dollars and now I'm not trying to order to raise some capital from these VCs and stuff. I'm still gonna tell them, you know what? I don't really need your money. I'm good. You know, we make ten thousand bucks a day at the minimum, so you should tell me why I should take your money. And this is after like two months, right? So eventually, uh, at this point, money is not really an object that as much anymore, right? We, we our burn, entire burn for the month was like eighteen thousand dollars, and we're making that in a day. So uh, we, I use that um, traction. To basically then uh, you know be like let's scrap our brilliant brilliant right now take all this feedback from all these people that just, like didn't like our product and let's remake it and now we have like one of the cleanest builders in the system um, during that time we had investors kind of hit us up and you when you're playing like it's like chasing girls you know you're like if girls play hard to get like you want her more right if she's like too easy you're like I don't know, you know, it's there. Um, so it's it's a little bit like that when you're talking to investors. You don't want to like beg and plead. It's like there's a fine line between hustling hard and you know doing too much. You know, so uh, it's also easy to say that when you are making money. I do understand that, but it's just something that you always have to keep in mind. You know, and that's like the point of like you know just being a hustler and and thinking like okay. I, just because you can't raise money, just because you can't do this, there's always a way. There's always a way to figure out, and that's what it's part of. That's like an inflection point that, that VCs look at. When they're looking at good entrepreneurs, they're like, do you know, actually, I'm gonna tell a quick story. Airbnb, everyone here knows Airbnb? Does anyone not know what Airbnb is? Okay, great. Airbnb is a $10 billion company, right? Uh, very good idea, and, and a lot of you probably think, oh yeah, super success, like overnight, whatever. Actually, fuck no, terrible, Terrible, it was a great story. Anyways, these guys get into, so these guys started this idea. Um, they eventually got into Y Combinator, but this is how, this is what changed their, their business. So they started this idea. No one wants to invest in this business. This idea, this business is crazy. Why do you want random people sleeping at your house? You know, it's kind of, it's kind of a crazy idea. Um, but they didn't, they, after a year and a half of doing this, you know, they finally go to the, it's like the 2008 presidential election. They have like one month left of their business, um, of, of runway left for their business. Um, eventually, they tell the, uh, you know, all the press, like, hey, we are Airbnb, this is what we do. They get a few people, but they were like, you know, there's all these people here for Obama and some are here for McCain. What could we do to, like, capitalize on this? So these guys, knew, someone knew a cereal, a person that makes cereal, right? And they're like, what if we did, like, these cereals called Captain McCain's and Obama's, right? And then we'll sell those. We'll make like 20,000 of them and we'll fucking sell them. Uh, that's literally what these guys did. Sold them for 20 bucks a box. They made about, I think it was like something like 60 or $80,000. It's on TechCrunch, you can Google, like you do the story, I'll do a little bit more justice. In any case, they make $80,000 off of these random Obamas. 
doesn't really have anything to do with this font, right? <laughs> Absolutely fucking nothing to do with this one. Uh, in any case, they eventually apply to Y Combinator because they're hustling hard this whole time. They're like getting investor intros, they're and stuff like that, whatnot. They eventually get a final round at Y Combinator. Y Combinator is an accelerator. It's extremely hard to get into. Um, basically, I think this school is hard to get into. 1% of people get into it. It's, I, I think it's like even less than that. It's like 1,500 people apply. They get like 50 or 5,000 people apply, 50, something like that. In any case, they get an interview with Paul Graham, one of the best, best known investors um, uh, in, in the industry. And he tells the idea, like they tell the idea of Paul Graham. Paul Graham thinks he's a fucking lunatic. Like, dude, he honestly, this is the worst idea. This is actually the worst idea and presentation I've ever seen in my entire life. <laughs> Literally what he says to you guys. These guys are very down, like this went terrible, you know? They're leaving and then they remember they brought one Obama host and one Cat McCain's and they're like, we're about to leave. And they're like, oh wait, well, in any case, we brought this for you. He was like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly this, whatever. So then the, they ask the story, they tell the story of how, uh, you know, of what happened, right? And uh, if you, and Paul Graham came and said, the only reason we allowed them to be in, tech, in, in Y Combinator is because of those cereal boxes. Because we didn't like their business, but they like, these guys are like cockroaches. No matter what the hell happens to them, they're not gonna fucking die. <laughs> and that, that, that in itself, right, was the runway they needed to get into Y Combinator, to then get the funding, to then, they did a bunch of sketch stuff with Craigslist too, that's, you should read about that. that that's literally like, it, it definitely helped their business a lot, in any case. And now they're a $10 billion company, right? So those type of things though, are the mentality that you need to put yourself into and, and be when you're trying to become an entrepreneur, right? Um, in any case, we went then went to this company, we started this company, uh, Along the way, somehow I got an introduction to Mark Cuban. Mark Cuban then became one of our advisors. You know, this complete whim thing, you know, and it's just like a series of leveling up, right? You're just always trying to. And then we raise this money, uh, and now we ship this product. And you know, the hard thing for us at the time was that Kieran dropped out of college, right? So this is actually was like one of the most challenging things. Cause like literally like there's so many questions. Like if you want to be an entrepreneur, just it, you have to basically like, just, uh, I'm actually a very calm person. You can give me like the worst news, like, oh, literally, there's uh, there's some, someone shooting up everyone over there, or this is happening, something. I'm like, oh, I'm pretty calm about that. You know, it's like nothing can really um, fuck with my mentality because I'm so used to so much chaos uh, happening in my life at all times. In any case, so Kieran uh, drops out of school, and if you don't know anything about immigration here in the city, in the, in the country, it's very hard for non uh, college graduates to get visas to come here, right? Um, so we had to like go jump like 35 mountains to get Kieran this O visa. He's like, should I go to college? Should I run this tech company from here? Are we gonna get funding? What's going on with the company? You know, it was a huge mess. And now eventually in May, Kieran moved here. We got this O visa, which is like the same thing that like athletes, singers, Nobel Peace Prize winners get. Like it's like people of extraordinary ability. And we, we got that and we grew this company from four to 31, which has its, all of its own challenges, like employee culture, all these type of things. But if you really think about it and go to like the core, it all started from me paying here $85 for a random fucking app for my business, right? And then all those random things along the way. And those are the type of things though that like, the journey is like the most important thing. And I think that um, all of you should really think about, okay, like what, what can I do right now? What am I passionate about? You know, figure out like what that is and, and think about how you wanna live your life, right? But don't go and aim for the fences or don't do something because you think like, I can't do it yet. You know, just do it now, right? And and, and, and truthfully, just fucking do it now, you know? And uh, yeah, so that's like kind of the biggest thing. It actually took a lot longer than I thought it was gonna take. Um, so I'll open it up for questions, uh, if you guys have any, uh, and that's pretty much all I got. <laughs> You said you have people working abroad. Yes. How does that work? How do you get to that? Uh, so if you, th there's a lot of ways you can do it, right? Uh, there will be your fair share of headaches, like that jump thing wrong, you know, that's a good thing. Um, so what I did is I went to sites like Odesk.com or Freelancer.com, and if you think about it, everything, it, it, think about the world is like, certain, like, when I go to Thailand, I could literally stay at a five-star hotel, have a great meal, whatever, I'm literally gonna spend maybe like $60 to the hotel and like $5 for my meal. That would never happen here. But the with the average income in Thailand, I can pay someone $800 a month and that's like the equivalent of me making 
$6,000 a month here, right? So I find people that I know have good work ethic that can do things like, you know, I wouldn't necessarily, you could build an MVP, like a minimally viable product with a person uh, from overseas. But, you know, think about, like, for things like tasks, like, you're just like, say if I want to go and, and I want to collect emails of every CEO um, in the Chicago area, you can go do that yourself. That's going to be a massive pain in the ass, but you can go do that by yourself. Or you can just hire someone to, like, do that for you over there, right? And then you, it's all about, like, very explicit details and instructions and then getting them there. But I would really think about, like, what you can outsource in your life. Um, that's one way to do it. And then eventually what we did is like we found very good people that worked in Bali. We have nine people that worked in Bali full time, right? We bought, we found one really good guy. We're like, this guy is the rock star and he's gonna like manage our team there. And then he basically everything else is just recommendations. Like, cause he's, he knows the right people there, you know? So that's kind of how we've done it in, in, our, in, our, in our business. Anything else? Yes. So you just took your latest round of funding. What's your thought on tapping that control? In, for terms of that money, especially when you have a run. Uh, so, <coughs> the question is uh, passing, like basically giving up equity uh, to investors. Um, so, you, you know, this is actually something that I always thought about myself because I've always bootstrapped all the companies I've started. I didn't, never, never took investment from anyone. Um, so, it's a lot of something I've really thought about a lot. Um, I looked at it this way if I didn't take investment, I probably could have owned 100% of a $1 million business. Instead, I own 70% of a $10 million business. You know, and then once I've taken the money, that he has connections, like our investors have connections to all these people, they've been there, you know, our investor happened to start a billion dollar consulting company um, and, and has all these connections and other things. So basically the next round of capital would be much easier for me to raise. So would you rather own, you know, 40% of a billion dollar company or 20% of a billion dollar company or whatever have you, you know, or 100% of you know, one million dollar company. It's up to you. Um, with that being said, you should always, don't take money just because someone's offering you money. Like, there's a lot of investors that aren't good investors out there. They like want to fund you. Like, you know, so you have to be like, just know who you're getting in bed with. Essentially, is that essentially, that's as easy as I'm gonna say. Uh, any other questions? Yeah. Have you always owned 100% of everyone in your business? Uh, yeah, I've uh, I've bought in a couple websites. I wouldn't say those are buyouts with like very small chance like five grand, you know. But uh, outside of that, yeah, I've I've always started every company. Um, the first company that I started, uh, where I actually had a partner of some sort, was was, was with Kieran. Um, but Kieran actually originally came in as a contractor, and then I saw how much a hustle this kid gave and like, how like just an amazing person. So I was like, dude, you should be a co-founder. You want to do it? Uh, but yeah, I, but I mean, with that being said, be, be sure to reward people that are gonna join. Like at the end of the day, your job, if you're trying to become an entrepreneur, if you're trying to be a leader, you have to empower other people and you have to make, especially the people that work for you, like or work with you, uh, to believe in your idea and believe in what you're saying and your mission and what you're gonna do. And that's a lot of work, right? So you have to reward those people. And sometimes you can't reward them with cash because it's not like I'm just like chilling, like, and spend the bills here on all these people. I mean, you know, we're actually paying below market rates, but you give them equity and you give them, and if they believe in your character and you as a person, they'll stick with you.